So we've got a small handful of comic news here from Marvel and DC, mostly DC today, and I expect some more things to be happening after I record this, so we'll, you know, we'll catch people up. But I want to give some context behind some of the news that's coming out, so let's do that. Hey everybody, this is Perch. Um, after a uh, kind of tumultuous week, and, and I mean, brace yourself, it's going to be another two to three weeks of revelations and scandals and other things coming out that's not going away. Uh, in many cases, just getting started. And uh, the indicator for me is I can look at people on Twitter and then suddenly someone's deleted their account or cleared out all their tweets. And there's a number of comic creators who have done that um, or you know, significant others of those comic creators. And unfortunately, it's, it's just previewing what I think the next couple of weeks are going to look like. So, um, you know, uh, some big names uh, on there I think are going to get hit by this. And I, I, my hope in, I you don't know, get off this topic, but my hope in all this is that the attention does, as I've been saying over and over, start to migrate to the publishers and to why some of these things, uh, you know, have been going on for so long. The repeated comment of, oh, we've known about this for years. It's like, you know, that's not a good thing anymore. It, it's, I think people say that as if to give strength to their argument that uh, we've known about it for years, so it's a real problem. It's like, yeah, it is a real problem. It's a problem that nobody was fixing this since you've known about it for years. I, and I, I hope that those questions start to be asked. Comics is a very sheltered, insular business, and it doesn't like to be questioned. It doesn't like for people to poke at it. Um, I, I mean, you could look at a lot of the, uh, the, the complaints that people have had were quickly lumped into you know, toxic fans when they weren't. They had nothing to do with toxic fans. It was people making legitimate, concerned complaints. And and it was famed that way. So I, I don't know. We'll see where it all goes. But in terms of, it's nice to have some actual comic news. So what do we know? So first off, DC teased some Harley Quinn news on Friday. I think we're getting a pair of news. So we know one of them. We know that the uh, kind of first, and, and we'd, we'd gotten a hint of this earlier because some information was leaked about a week ago, but we're getting our first kind of official um, uh, Sean Gordon Murphy uh, White Knight universe book of Harley Quinn. It's going to take that character and really kind of evolve and, and flesh out that universe with some new villains, uh, a villain called The Producer, um, and uh, I think Scarlet, I, I'm sorry, <laughs> and some other characters uh, going on in there that uh, that, that look pretty cool. I'm, I'm excited to see that that universe kind of flesh out and build. It's turned itself into a really nice little Elseworlds kind of place. And uh, the, the cool part for me is that we've got, uh, you know, we're, we're seeing some other creators come to the pitch. We always knew that it wasn't going to be just Sean Gordon Murphy's uh, world. So he's co-writing this series uh, with his wife, uh, Katana Collins. So that's, that's awesome. Get a little team going. And then uh, Matteo Scalera, is uh, and and Dave Stewart doing colors is the the artistic team now, Scalera. I'm a I'm a very big fan of. I have been for a long time. I think his work uh, actually matches incredibly well with Murphy's, so it will fit in that same kind of look and feel. So I'm I'm excited to see it go. I, I'm pleased by this news. I I think it will be cool. Um, you may know Scalera from um, uh, Black Science or uh, Secret Avengers, uh, way back in the day with Reminder. So I, the, you know, I'm, I'm anxious to see where, where it happens. So glad to see this universe kind of continuing and building up. Um, the other bit of news that's going on. Oh, actually, before I jump off that, there's some questions about is it a one shot or a series? All indications and all the words say series, that this is going to be some level of limited series, uh, not a one shot. But that question is out there. Uh, this is indicative, by the way, of, of DC being unclear in how they market things. And, and I, I, you know, DC is doing a lot of things right now, and I think they're taking a lot of bold steps. Please hire somebody to oversee your marketing like, and get one of the YouTubers. And, and that sounds crazy, I know. I know I'm not pushing myself for the job. Like, Get somebody who's in love with comics, who knows kind of how to promote. Um, not, not one of the outraged people, but just, just somebody who, who's reasonable and get them to start helping kind of as an advisor to your marketing. That, that, if you could sew that up, man, you, you, DC would be in much better shape. But, but anyway, um, over to uh, Event Leviathan, which is the other bit of news. Uh, people like to jump on Bendis. Um, there's a lot of street traffic noise. Sorry. Sorry about that. Just out of a little park here. Um, 
Event Leviathan is postponed indefinitely. Now, this is, I, I believe the words postponed is accurate here. I don't think it's canceled. There's no indication that it's uh, it's cut. It is um, being rescheduled to align with upcoming DC Universe storylines. I think somebody at DC got the message that, you know, maybe having conflicting storylines when uh, You're the Villain was going on and you also had Event Leviathan going on, it, it didn't come together well. It felt clunky. It felt like writers were not talking to each other and people were not on the same page. And so one of the uh, the things that I'm, I'm seeing more in this uh, revitalized DC or this, this DC post uh, video is that they're trying better to, you know, not not have everything go at once. They're trying better to schedule. And so I do believe this is a postponement. Um, I think it would make absolutely no sense to have a uh, Joker war and um, uh, dark death metal and event Leviathan checkmate going all at the same time. It would be stupid, I think, to have all three happening all at once from a sales perspective and from a reader perspective. So I'm pleased to see. I think it's good that it, it delays. I think the series will have a better chance to shine. Um, some people are just sick of Bendis, want him to go away entirely, but uh, this this is uh, kind of digging into, I think, what he does better, which is kind of the uh, the underground, the spy stuff. Um, going to feature Green Arrow, Atalia, The Question, Lois Lane, um, going up against Mark Shaw and and the secret of the spy organization that tends to be far more up Bendis' wheelhouse. So I think it, it is a good comic for him, and I think it will be interesting to see it go. And when Death Metal concludes, and whatever DC looks like afterward, they're going to need some threats. Uh, you know, we are already getting the Joker War and Death Metal kind of going at the same time. Those are two big things. So, you know, after that moment, we're going to need some some good, solid threats. And and so it's, it's a good idea, I think, to postpone it. Most likely, this is postponing into 2021, I think, and, and once all the death settles from uh, everything that comes. And, and by the way, it's smart for DC to start queuing things up for the world after. I, I think that makes sense. Um, over in the you know the world of Marvel, I think there's um, there's two bits of news. The first is that kind of building off what I said earlier, I've heard um, I got some reactions to the videos um, mentioning that some people at Marvel were concerned about layoffs and other things. Um, definitely hearing a lot of confirmation that there is concern about uh, cuts and that the line is going to reduce. And I want to clear up something that that I think people mistook in both comments uh, in my video and also I did some comments over uh, with Wes and Thinking Critical. Um, when I said, you know, Marvel would be kind of going back to basics, I think a lot of people took that to assume kind of going back to uh, the style they used in the 80s. Um, and that's not the case at all. By back to basics, what I mean here is they're going back to, uh, it's not back actually to anything. It's more of a uh, the, the books are very by the by the numbers. They're designed to be complementary to movies and to just the IP itself. Um, not taking big chances with their core characters, keeping them very much, um, you know, in a in a very fixed place. Uh, telling stories that if you come in on issue number six, you're not screwed. You know, they're they're very they're going. I've used the example of very much like the Marvel IDW adventures type books where. You know, when they exist in continuity, maybe doesn't matter as much, and they're very kind of, you know, straightforward tales or, or tales that can be easily defined. Now, obviously, we do have uh, the the Null uh, adventure coming up. We have some cosmic plans. We have some other things going on with Marvel. So it's not all going to fit this way. Um, but even Marvel has looked at things like the Immortal Hulk and said, you know, this has been a, a series that's you know, a little bit more easy to just pick up, read, and put down, and it's it's not tied into a bunch of things. It's kind of avoided a lot of the other events, and it it just it's it's its own thing. It's a straightforward Hulk tale, which, when I first heard, seemed very strange to me uh, because it's it's a different take on the Hulk. It's doing more of a horror theme on the Hulk, but upon thinking about it more, I think that comment is right. It is more of a a. Um, it's a book you can pick up, read no other Marvel titles, and not really have to deal with other Marvel books and get a coherent story. Um, definitely, it dips into a lot of continuity. Al Ewing always does that. But the writing is a little bit different than, say, um, some of what the Avengers has been doing, which is uh, has the Avengers BC and, and just kind of all these other elements. And uh, Or, you know, you can pick up the Hulk book and you can recognize there's the Hulk. And he's got some villains that we kind of recognize. And, you know, it's, it's relatively straightforward. It's not... Uh, trying bold new things where, you know, Iron Man is an AI or maybe he's not and, you know, Riri Williams is there or maybe Jim Rhodes. It's just, it's, it's 
it's it's just cleaner, I think, and that's that's what I think you're going to see. Um, the other bit of Marvel news is a little bit more just straightforward, and that is they're going to be continuing to push into the prose line uh, with you know the stories around Doctor Doom, Domino, Thor, the X Men. Um, this is where they're trying to really crack into that that book market and and do more things there. Um, in a lot of cases, it's uh, you know I, I think that. They're just, a lot of people are flailing around. They're trying to figure out what exactly is going to work, both DC and Marvel. They know they want these other markets. They don't know exactly how to get it. And, um, you know, they're, they're going to, to pretty much uh, come down and, and, and you're going to see continual efforts on that behalf. Um, uh, the other bit of, of news on Empire. So there's been a, a big cleaning of Empire series. So uh, books that have been cut include The Ghost Rider, Invasion of Wakanda, the Spider-Man spinoff, Squadron Supreme, Storm Ranger. You know, it, it, I think it's a lot more just an indicative of the time of COVID. So one other last bit of news that I find interesting is um, UCS, one of the new distributors, uh, as a thank you, is giving a graded comic book. So everybody who signed up for their service is getting a graded DC comic book free as a, as a thank you. Um, and what we're hearing from both Lunar and UCS is you're going to see a very heavy emphasis on promotional materials, uh, posters, graded comics, additional things. Um, it's their way of kind of responding to the back to come back um, as opposed to stickers and flyers uh, really promoting Diamond. Um, UCS and Lunar uh, are making a statement that they're going to promote the comics they have to sell, i.e. DC. And there's a little bit of a dangling bait out there to other publishers to say, hey, you know, we're going to take an active interest in giving your content to shops and really help you in that process. That's a really smart move. And I think it's going to quiet down some of the retailers who are opposed to it. It's putting a freebie in their hands. I'm sure some people will be skeptical of it, think that this is, uh, is bait. It is, in a sense. Um, but it's smart bait. And I think that the more of these kinds of efforts, the better comics needs them right now. So that's a good move by UCS. I hope to see more of it. Uh, but overall, it's it's an interesting time. And, uh, you know, <laughs> it's good to have some news that's not scandals for a change. Any questions on any of this, leave me a comment below. Like, subscribe, follow me on Twitter or Facebook at Comic Perch. And thanks for listening.